Hey guys, this is Amber from the Happy Caravan. I'm a mom of 11 kids and we live in New York City and I'm gonna share with you the story of our new little baby. First of all, I wanna tell you her name. <laughs> she needed a little nursing break, that's <laughs> per usual. If you're a newborn breastfeeding mom, you know. So her name is Netta and I heard that name when I was in college and I, I had a friend named that. I thought that's just such a cute sounding name. But what it means is new growth. It also means Grace, which is, I wanted to wait until after she was born just to make sure that was the right name for her. Just like her birth story and everything, it just seemed like was a real indicator of God's grace in our lives. And so I thought that would be the perfect name for her. So I'm gonna show you guys, as I'm telling this story, some footage I took of what I was going through emotionally while this was all happening. It was actually part of my what we eat in a week video, which <laughs> I gave up on showing what we ate and it was just all ended up all being about the baby. Um, just because the baby's basically birth was all throughout the week, kind of things leading up to it. But what happened was I went on Thursday to a doctor appointment and they're concerned about the baby just because I'm older, I'm 44, and I guess studies show that if you're particularly over 39, but especially over 40 weeks and you're older, the rate of fetal demise is, is quite high. So of course, you know, <laughs> didn't want that. So I went on on Thursday for her, for the regular OBGYN appointment. Then I went to take an NST test um, over at Mount Sinai, which is the, the hospital. For the NST test and the sonogram, so that's downstairs. That's on the second floor, like non-emergency, like you're not having a baby, we're just checking you out, you know. So I went in there and her heart rate, um, which is what they're monitoring, did weird things that didn't make sense. And so like what happened was her heart rate was totally, totally mm -hmm. fine. And then it would just have these random dips and they just didn't make sense. But, but then it was fine most of, most of the time, but just like little bits. So it would into the teens, it sh a baby's heart rate should be like 120, 125. So it went into the teens, it went into um, like not, te well, 100 and uh, teens, you know, and then went into like, you know, maybe just a little bit below one, 110, very briefly. So when we went into the sonogram, they're like, oh, well, she's, she's sucking on her umbilical cord, which that makes sense, you know, if, if she's pulling on it, you know, what's giving her her, you know, blood and oxygen and ever that, that makes, you know, that makes sense. So. I got done with that and they're like, you know, I want you to, they said they want me to be seen upstairs at labor and delivery. I'll show you some footage of me stressing out about this experience. You'll see that I'm kind of like, like frustrated and a little bit faithless <laughs> in, the, in the process. But um, in the end, I'll tell you how everything actually worked out just perfectly. Like all the things that were like, oh, and then this happened and this happened. Just seemed like God worked it out. I've had. 11 babies now. Um, before I had her, I had 10 and it's like, God always seemed to work it out, but you know, there's faith, faithless me <laughs> freaking out. Hey guys, welcome to Thursday morning. This is my last, I think, OBGYN appointment before the baby's born because they're inducing me on um, Wednesday. So <laughs> they're just going to check and make sure everything's okay. If everything's not okay, they're maybe going to induce me today. Um, but of course, I'm hoping I can make it till next Wednesday because Elijah, we still have to turn in his Juilliard application and I guess MSM and some of the other schools. So, kind of crunch time here, but <laughs> God knows. Anyway, so I'm on my way to the Upper West Side where my OBGYN is. This is Harlem. And my subway's right up there. Tamales, I always want to try this. I wasn't in a hurry. Oh, the fruit stand so pretty. It was really cold last night, so there's like slushy ice down there. Okay, so everything seemed good. Her heart was beaten, and um, yeah, my blood pressure wasn't too high, which um, is something that's important. So. <laughs> On my way to the, um, the 
hospital where they're going to do a non-stress test just to make sure the food levels are okay and also check how her feet does with like various movements and so forth so my induction is scheduled December 6th at 6 in the morning I'm not a morning person so um, yeah <laughs> so I'm gonna have to get to bed early the night before in less than a week it's so like it's like when you're pregnant it's like you feel the baby you know the baby's coming but it's not until the baby's born for me at least that I'm like oh, there's a baby <laughs> so anyway I'm really excited so we're half on our way to Mount Sunny West This is one of those food carts, and he's actually towing it, so that's how they get around. Here's the food cart. Food cart. <laughs> a combination of a truck and a cart. He just keeps writing in the prices of the different items. I guess it's a good idea to keep your prices uh, fluid, because things keep, keep getting more expensive. Here's the hospital. This is where I'm actually going to be induced. But, um, so I'm going to be induced here next week, but right now I'm just going through the test. And what they told me was the 12th floor, I guess, is labor and delivery. So, right now I'm just going to the second floor. <laughs> Not such an elevator ride. Here we are. See how baby's doing. Okay, so that was unexpected. <laughs> so what's happening is um, I went in and her heart rate was a little bit low in some of the times. And so I went into the sonogram and they're like, oh yeah, her fluid levels are still good. But um, she's playing with the umbilical cord. <laughs> so I think that may be why her heart rate was low because the umbilical cord is basically like your blood source when you're in utero. But, um, so they sent me up to the 12th floor, which is labor and delivery, just to check me for a little bit longer, and her heart rate was okay there. So that was good. But they're like, uh, you know what, you're 44 years old, you're 39 in one day, weeks. That, tomorrow I'll be 39 in two. They're like, we want to induce you tomorrow. So I'm like, okay. So anyway, <laughs> looks like we're having a baby tomorrow. I'm, you know, I've been through this a lot, so I kind of, I think I forget where I'm going. Um, so I know what to expect, but like, I was just mentally preparing for next Wednesday. <laughs> but, you know, I, um, you know, I, I trust the doctors. I mean, I've been helped so much by careful doctors in the past. And so I'm going to, um, I'm going to trust the doctors on this one. So we're having a baby tomorrow. Lord willing, I'm going to call in the morning and see if they have room for me. If they room for me, we're having a baby. <laughs> but the good news is, is that... Elijah's um, Juilliard application, MSM, every application is due basically tomorrow. So I'm trying to try and finish all this stuff, like the FAFSA and everything tonight. <sighs> In mad rush, you know, it's like when you're a first time mom, you don't have to worry about like teenagers too. But when you, you know, you've got kids in all the ages, you have to, um, you have to plan for all your kids, not just the baby. <laughs> Anyway, I will meet you, baby. We're back up town. Back home in Harlan. So beautiful. Okay, so you know, I always pray, and I'm like, "Well, oh, God, your timing's perfect." Sometimes we say that. <laughs> Sometimes I say that, and I don't really mean it. I'm like. I wasn't really ready for this, but God knows I just have to be like I wasn't like I have like everything all planned like okay we're gonna go shopping for groceries on this day and we're gonna but no <laughs> so but you know what Mark's a big boy he can do those things on his own I know it but um yeah so I'm just such a mommy bird you know I'm always like always um you know double checking things and being neurotic but Sometimes I just gotta let go. This is one of those times because we don't have a baby. <laughs> and the other thing is that the kids are so helpful. Like 
I know like Naomi and everyone, they're just like so excited for the baby and so I know they'll help me with stuff that I usually do on my own. So I just, I am a bit of a control freak, that's a confession, so I have to let it go. <laughs> the doctor it is now the evening even though I started out in the morning it is I can't even remember what day it is I'm so stressed out oh, Thursday so we're making french fries and hamburgers and Naomi's helping me with the french fries thank you Naomi so the hamburgers are ready they're making their burgers we got yeah you can you might yeah, I don't know if you're gonna be able to eat the whole thing though so we got Tomatoes, sweet onions, lettuce, ketchup, mayonnaise, all that good stuff. How are the fries, Naomi? Did you try them? Uh, I tried it one, and I didn't try hot. Oh yeah, <laughs> they got cold. We had to reheat them. Mm, good. Ketchup. Mm. You want more ketchup? He's a ketchup lover. Mm. That's the most this are. Are we almost out of ketchup? Oh, put them we are inside that. Mommy, I'm shopping this. Uh oh. Mommy, this is the best hamburger ever. Yes. Ever. <laughs> Dad kicked some good out there on the grill. I love hamburgers. I just there did this. Two three nine six. It's a working dinner. It's a two three nine six. Security number. Oh. Here's my last, hopefully, <laughs> pre-induction meal. <laughs> Yay, hamburger. Pomegranate over here. You guys sharing uh, a pomegranate? Uh, mama. Is it so good? Uh, uh, mama. Mm -hmm. It's a pretty good pomegranate. <laughs> you want to pick one? Uh, you put that in the wall. Here, you can pick these. <laughs> They're stuck in there, huh, Mo? Did you get a good one? <laughs> You try the pomegranate? It's so good. Is no <laughs> Noah's having a lot of pomegranate, huh? You gonna be healthy? No, no. Yes, no one made it for you, huh? But anyway, so I went up to the, the top floor and everything was fine. Her the the labor and delivery floor, which is um twelfth floor. And everything was fine. Her heart rate would, did not dip at all. It was like, it was almost like that, you know, that cartoon, The Dancing Frog, where it's like, you know, it's, it's perfect. It's not perfect, it's perfect. So anyway, they asked me, would you like to be induced today? And, um, you know, I didn't have my backpack and it was like, I was just was not like, it's like, oh, I guess, you know, but I mean, the, the NST was totally fine on the 12th floor. So I was like, they were like, yeah, either way, it's fine, you know. So I ended up going home. It was Thursday evening. I needed to help Elijah with his application for college. And it, like, according to NST, it was like, not like nothing really was that wrong or whatever. I ended up going home and they said, you know, come in at like nine in the morning. So from, anyway, from five to nine, but call us before you come in. I called in the morning to, I had had my bag, bag packed Friday morning. And I was like, hey, you know, I'm y'all ready for me. And they're like, um, no, <laughs> this place is full to the brim. We're not ready for you. Don't come in. So I was like, okay. Um, they said, we'll call you. We'll call you when you were ready for you. So at 12 o'clock, yes. So they're like, oh, we'll call you at 12. They did not call me at 12. <laughs> so I call them at like two. And they're like, mm, you can come in at, at 4.30. So I go in there at 4.30. I don't call them again because I'm like, they're just going to tell me not to come, right? So I go in there at 4.30. <laughs> Hi guys, it is 4 in the afternoon and I'm going in for an induction. It's 4 and it's dark because it's, 
it seems like I guess because we're closer to or farther from the equator or something um, it gets dark really really early um, in New York City so anyway I'm on my way to an induction I was supposed to go at like 8 or between 5 and 9 I call it like 8 30 I'm like hey do you guys have a spot and they're like no I will call you at 12. They didn't call me at 12. So I called them at two. And was, they were like, hey, do you have a spot? And they're like, oh, well, actually I couldn't even get through. Then Mark got through. And then they, um, they're like, well, we'll have some beds at four. So anyway, it took me a while to pack all my, all my bags and everything. So I'll see if they send me home. I don't know, we'll see. <laughs> it's hard because there's just, there's not enough people manning the uh, healthcare system here, so. It's hard to find a spot. <laughs> oh, and Mark called just now and he couldn't get through either, so. <laughs> we'll see, and it's raining with my umbrella and my lovely hat. <laughs> On the train. <laughs> I just got all my bags, it's most of them. So we exited the train and we're headed to Columbus Circle at night, so it looks a little different at night. Still got my stuff. So we're, yeah, as I come here all the time. So we're at Columbus Circle and it's raining and windy. <laughs> this is my well-traveled path for me recently, <laughs> trying to get to the hospital. And all my tests and stuff. So right across the street is the hospital. They usually don't let me film in the hospital, but we'll see. See what I can get away with. <laughs> Hopefully they have a spot for me. We'll see. <laughs> okay, we need another nursing break. Um, I'm also supplementing with formula because she has a little bit of jaundice, but um, anyway, it's, you know, the eating thing is constant when you're little. I went in at 4.30 and they're like, okay, well, we'll have a place for you, you know, just hang out, just wait, you know? So 4.30 turns into 5.30, turns into 6.30, turns into 7.30. So it's been about eight hours now. Amber. I have had it. I have had it. We're done. We're trying out the ball. After eight hours of sitting in this thing. Yeah. We're done. I've had it. So, sweetheart, what are they going to do? Uh, NST just to make sure our baby's okay. I think baby's okay. I hope baby's okay. Yeah. Well, we'll see. So, finally, here we are. No, it's just the NST. I know. But she at least passes. they're checking. So, they're checking. Yeah. So, we'll see. My heart rate's okay. My blood pressure's high. I don't know why. It's 123 or 78. It's usually lower, so yeah. that makes me nervous. But. It's true. Well, I'm gonna set down the bags here and we'll see what happens. <laughs> so so we're going we get home. to go home. Yeah, yeah. finally it's two AM. Everything everything checked out. Yeah, baby's baby, healthy. Baby seems okay, my blood pressure's high, but besides that, um, yeah. higher than I'm comfortable with, but not high for normal people, but high for me. I'm usually in the like nineties, so we anyway, shall see. Home again, home again, off we go. <laughs> I didn't leave, basically like at two in the morning, I was like, ah, I need to sleep. Like if there is something wrong with the baby, me having like a sleepless night in the waiting room is not gonna, <laughs> not gonna do any good. So they're like, okay, we'll go to an NST. Um, this is at like 2.30 in the morning. And um, if that, you know, looks okay, um, then you can go home and, and, you know, we'll call you in the morning. Um, and there was this charge nurse over in labor and delivery and she like was so nice. I was going to be another two hours just to get into the NST um, and labor delivery. That's how busy it was. Like people just kept coming in. They were in labor and I wasn't, you know, so they took priority and it was just a zoo. Um, I found out the next day that there was like certain hours that evening when they delivered five babies in one hour, which for, you know, labor and delivery department is just like, you know, a lot of times the laboring is, you know, kind of staggered. And so, you know, there'll be like, one delivery this hour, two deliveries next hour, but no, it was just like, boom, like just, just a barrage of <laughs> women having babies. So there is this 
charged nurse at labor and delivery and she just, you know, she was rooting for me, I could tell. And she's like, you know, you come back here, there's, we can give you NST like in this back room here so you don't have to wait another two hours. I mean, this is the one that said, we'll call you tomorrow. And so I honestly, because they hadn't called me, you know, the, before I was like, yeah, they're not gonna call, whatever. <laughs> I'm gonna be ready, but they're not gonna call. Faithless me. <laughs> anyway, so. I went into the NST and just once again, her heart rate was just like, it was textbooks, which like just perfect, you know, everything responded perfectly, which was one of the confusing things that was happening this the, during this whole time was everything was fine. And then it was like, oh, maybe not fine, well, it was fine. And anyway, so I went home. Okay, so <laughs> that was an exercise in futility. 10 hours of waiting and no induction. So I'm gonna let them call me when they have room. And until then, I'm staying home. <laughs> Unless, of course, the baby starts moving or something, then I'll come in. <sighs> Frustration. I should have known New York City is full of such things. So what happened was, um, at, like, they had room, but then, like, like someone in active labor who's like, you know, actually like in labor they let them have uh, preeminence pre what do they call it priority priority <laughs> preeminence <laughs> it's a biblical word anyway so i am not priority for apparently so we're gonna have to come back another day here we are on this circle here's where the station is but these little trees are so pretty look at that this is what the subway station looks like at 2 a.m it's quite empty for 2 a.m. there's actually quite a few people here. I guess this is the city that never sleeps. <laughs> 24 hours a day. But this girl, she needs to go home and sleep. We're waiting for the train. 59th Street. Reminder that it's 2.20 a.m. on Saturday instead of Friday. And there's our train. Very slowly coming in. <laughs> so beautiful, even at 2.30, we got them out. Isn't that amazing? Um, I slept. I mean, I was like, you know, I, I, I probably didn't get to sleep until like by the time we were home, like 4.30 or 5 in the morning. So I just, I just slept. I was like, whatever. Turned my phone off. Um, I figured... You know, if they call, you know, and I'm exhausted, like, what's the point of me going in? I have to, like, have some strength to, like, labor, you know? So I just, I slept until probably, like, noon. And then, I, you know, I got ready, and I was going to get in the shower. Like, I was right about to get in the shower. And then labor and delivery calls me. And they're like, can you come in at 6.30? And I was like, yeah, <laughs> okay. Which, I mean, the timing was perfect. Because, like, after I take a shower, I have to, you know, blow dry my hair. I mean, I don't have to, but you know what I mean. Like, it was just, like, more to do. Like, I wouldn't have been ready to come in by 6.30. So I was just like, I just, you know, wash my face. You know, it's all good. We can shower later, right? Um, so I just washed my face. And um, just, you know, my bag was already packed. And so I headed in there. Okay, so this is round two. I'm on my way to the hospital. They said I could come in at 6.30. I don't know. Um, it's, uh, only, it's actually already 6.14. So I don't know if I'm gonna get there in time for them to see me, but I'm gonna try, we'll see. And just praying, <laughs> it seemed like last time I came in, every mother in the world was, I mean, not, <laughs> every mother in New York City was deciding they needed to go into labor right when I was there. So I was like, oh, so they're like, well, sorry. So yesterday I was there for 11 hours. I came home at three in the morning. This time, they don't see me right away. I'm just gonna, I mean, not right away, but you know, I'm like three, four hours. I'm just gonna be like, okay. Just discharge me, I'll come back another time. So, let's see what happens. I'm praying, I'm praying, I'm praying. But they have a spot for me. Here we go. The station. Maybe it'll help me go in labor on meal. We'll see. 
that was a lot of stairs, but I'm not in labor yet, so. <laughs> Hopefully the doctor can help me out. Here's a douche bank, in case you wanna do some banking. <laughs> when I write note, it is like 58 degrees, so it so, feels so warm. <laughs> Compared to like the 40 degree days, 38 degree days we've been having. Little halal court here. This guy is, we, I, we left the hospital yesterday at 3. It was still open, so this guy's out here all night. Here we are at the hospital. I'm hoping they'll take me. We'll see. Praying, praying that they'll take me. And Mark's gonna meet me later. Oh, round two. <laughs> And um, it, like amazingly, it wasn't that long. They saw me pretty quickly. So found Amber and everything is there around the seats. We got a lot of stuff here. Anyway, um, always helps, you know, after all the difficulty, it's, it's tough. Amber's hungry, she needs things and it's just not nice not being home. So we brought home here. You doing okay? Hi. Yeah. Hi, they sweetheart. Put an IV in me for the yeah. Pitocin, and they did a fully balloon to try and dilate me, I think. I think that's what they're trying to do. Yeah. Just hope it works. Pray yeah. it works. All right. Get some rest. They took me back to labor and delivery, and they were like, okay, you know, we'll, we'll start. They did like a fully balloon, um, which is to kind of help your cervix kind of be ready for labor. Um, and then they did, oh cute, she's like awake, she's just listening to me. <laughs> they started the Pitocin. So we're just sitting down and, and uh, well I am, but Amber, Amber is up because I don't know if, you know, I, I wouldn't know, but Amber says that this bed could get very uncomfortable, you know, yeah, tailbone starts tailbone. hurting. So we're trying this ball thing, which is, I guess, super comfortable, at least somewhat Supposed comfortable to, to sit on. It's so more it's comfortable squishy. than the ball. It's more than, than the bed, so. Yeah. So how are you doing, sweetie? You're I'm okay. I mean, I don't think okay. I only have the, the oxytocin or whatever on the two. Oh, that's right. So yeah. it's, it's pretty so, low, so. Yeah. It's oh. like uncomfortable, but not unbearably uncomfortable, so. It's about 11.20 right now, and Amber's trying to get some rest. I really don't want to bug her, but I figured I'd record a little bit. Having some contractions, you're just not super strong. So they took out the fully balloon, which means supposedly I'm three to four centimeters. So that's supposed to help kind of get things moving. So now they've up my Pitocin to four. So with Moses, they had to up it to 12 before I was like ready to go. So we'll see, <laughs> we'll see how this goes. But we're trying to have a baby. I feel like, what time is it? It's like 11.30? It's yeah, 11.45. I feel like it might be like a three in the morning birth, but we'll see. Ooh, so, yeah. we'll see. <laughs> I'm trying to rest well, in the meantime. Yeah. All right, sweetheart. I love you. Love you too. Everything was fine. She um, Occasionally her heart rate would dip, you know, into the teens, you know, but, but you know, or, or occasionally go below. But then, you know, the nurse was like, you know, nothing ever is... You know completely perfect the problem is you know if it stays low you know so like a low you know you know 108 you know here or there is fine as long as you know it gets back to the baseline which is, should be 125 but somewhere in the course of kind of the contractions and so forth her heart rate dipped um i think it was kind of below 110 somewhere between like 80 and 110 which is not where it's supposed to be so all you know all the doctors came in well, I mean, a lot of people came into this tiny room because they're actually monitoring you, which has been a problem in the past, like with Josiah, they weren't monitoring me correctly. But at this hospital, Mount <laughs> Sinai West, give them props, they actually are checking you out. They all, you know, a bunch of people came in the room. They're like, um, what's happening? They're having a hard time catching her with the external monitor. 
So they'd asked me earlier, you know, hey, would you like us to break your water just to speed up labor? And I was like, you know, I don't, I don't know if that's a good idea because, it, you know, then the cord gets um, kind of compressed, you know, if, unless I'm like really ready about to deliver. And they're like, yeah, well, let's wait because I think I was like four centimeters or whatever. You know, not really painful labor yet, but it, it's feeling uncomfortable, like something's happening, you know. Anyway, so her heart rate dipped and it stayed low. This is before my water was broken. And so all these, all these doctors come in. They're like, try a different position cha position change so they had me on all they had me going all fours so just real quick uh, we had a little scare with baby and and uh, baby's heartbeat went down to 90 and then down to 80 and uh, so they've they've got amber in a different position right now just to give some relief to baby and uh, her heart beats back up, so we're, we're grateful for that, but uh, they are going to do a, an epidural in case Amber needs a cesarean, so we're praying. She recovered, and she stayed recovered for, you know, like everything was fine. But they said, because um, I try not to get an epidural unless I absolutely need it or whatever, but they're like, you know, you probably want to get an epidural. Do we just want to tell you? Because, you know, if her heart dips like that and it doesn't recover, you need an emergency cesarean. And if you don't have that epidural in already, you're going to have to do general anesthesia. And for me, honestly, I don't mind general anesthesia or whatever. Like, I've, been, I've had it before and I, you know, it didn't die or whatever. But I just wanted there to be no barriers between that emergency cesarean, um, I didn't want there to have to be any extra thing they had to wait for. I wanted them to be able to just like, you know, hypercharge that epidural and cut me open if they needed to, because I mean, it's like it's their life, you know? So I did end up getting epidural. So Amber has an epidural now. Um, we had a little bit of a scare with baby's uh, heart heartbeat and baby was doing better but uh just in case something in case we need a cesarean yeah in case something goes wrong we need a cesarean we've got the medication in place and and uh things can progress a lot faster so they put a monitor on baby's head actually to check her heart rate because yeah yeah You're doing well sweetheart I'm trying <laughs> hang in it was really, it was like, I've never had an epidural like this. I don't know if it's like, you know, modern, whatever. Because last time I had epidural was like, you know, 2006 was my, like, a real epidural. And then 2008 I had it, like, when I was delivering Naomi. And it was almost at the end, so I didn't even really, like, like benefit from it. But this epidural I got, I could still feel the contractions. But it wasn't, like, like insanely painful but it was like I'm still uncomfortable so I was like it was really nice because I felt like I was still able to be kind of in tune with what was happening with my body but like the, 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 the pain was like very like like it was much less painful <laughs> so the normal contractions are without an epidural I still feel them which was nice so you know the labor kind of progressed and it, you know I would um Oh, and this is the other thing that happened. So when her heart rate, when they first of all couldn't find it and it was kind of staying low and it was like, ah. So they did end up breaking my water because they wanted to stick a monitor, um, a heartbeat monitor on her head. Because, you know, when I would change position, I, they would kind of lose her heartbeat. Which, you know, time is, <laughs> time is of the essence when it comes to oxygen. You know, it's like, you know, like a, a three minute lapse of like, oh, I guess you were just sitting wrong and we couldn't find the baby, you know, could be, oh, the baby's, was, you know, dying. So it, it's very important, you know, to keep that <laughs> knowledge of what's happening with their heart rate. So anyway, so that's why they had the, the monitor on her head, which, you know, wasn't coming off. Didn't matter if I turned this way or that way, you know, you, you always knew what her heart rate was doing. But because of that, then what I found out at the end, you know, was that kind of, kind of an issue with her cord getting um, a little bit squished and, well, a lot squished at the end. So what ended up happening was they ended up having to put water back in with like a catheter so that there was, um, because it did seem like her heart rate at the end of a contraction would kind of slow, you know. And it was so weird because usually if a, a, I've had a kid in like regular fetal distress, so that was Elijah. And what happened was when I had a contraction, his heart rate would really dip. 
which is an indicator of, you know, this baby needs to come out, there's the not handling labor. She, on the other hand, was fine during the contraction, like totally fine. Like it would go up, like it's supposed to like, you know, like nervous, like, ah, someone's, po you know, squeezing me, you know? Um, and so her heart rate went nice, good textbook-ish, you know, during the contraction. And then after the contraction, it would, it would fall which doesn't make any sense, you know, just, it just didn't make sense. Like even the, the doctors were like, it's just, you know, it, 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 they've seen it before, but it doesn't make a lot of sense. As things progressed, and what's interesting was I usually go from like, you know, once I get to the six centimeter stage, it's from six to 10 in, you know, 20 or 30 minutes max, you know, at least obviously with, you know, having a lot of babies and so forth, like my body's like, okay, we're doing this now, you know? <laughs> Um, but it just, it, it was like an hour, you know, and I went from six to seven, you know, and kind of stayed there and it didn't make sense, you know, like, why is my body doing this? You know, what's going on with her heart rate? Just these strange things. All the time they're monitoring it. I'm not sleeping. I'm like, <laughs> they're like, would you like me to turn her heart rate, you know, m meter down so it's not beeping? I'm like, no, I want to hear the beep. <laughs> I like the beep. Keep the beat. <laughs> Keep the beep on. So yeah, I, I'm just like. I, I'm not gonna sleep. Like I'm like I need to know what's happening here. At, at a certain point, her heart rate went down, and it stayed down, and it didn't recover. And it was like, you know, teens below 110. You know, on the lower end, it was in the you know 80s, 90s, which is like not <laughs> this, this something something's wrong. So income, all the doctors, like all the people, all the all the all the <laughs> the head doctor. Um, and this is kind of like a God thing, I feel like, you know, because I feel like this head doctor was exactly the right doctor that I needed to see. And on top of that, it needed to not be like a night when like, you know, everybody and everybody's having a baby because, you know, I kind of needed like this entourage of people that were like helping in this situation. And this doctor came in, and, you know, because a lot of times you'll see a resident, you'll see, um, and what's funny is I, I, I love midwives. I love midwives. You know, I've kind of have this bias toward midwives, so much so that I was thinking about trying to find a clinic that would have a midwife. And I was so disappointed to find out that Mount Sinai West does, you know, they, midwives don't deliver. It's all, it's all doctors, you know, and I was like, oh, well, you know, because <laughs> I don't, you know, I had just had really good experiences with midwives. But even that was a blessing because the kind of delivery I needed was not a midwife delivery. This was like, you know, a, a doctor needed to be there. <laughs> What ended up happening was the head doctor came in and he said, okay, your, you know, her heart rate is down here. She's not recovering. We can do emergency cesarean or I can check you and see, you know, how, first it's like, let's check you, see how dilated you are. I was stay, I was at seven. I was staying at seven. He's like, well, you've had a lot of babies. Let's see if we can turn seven into 10. <laughs> And so what he had me do is he had me push really hard and he's like not hard enough I mean, I, I know he's trying to say that just to like get me to push harder, but oh my goodness I've like I've had broken blood vessels in my face from like throwing up or something, you know, some like ex like intense like, you know But I had I, after the birth I had like broken blood vessels on my back Shoulders like face <laughs> looked like I had freckles everywhere because I was just like I was pushing so hard I was like just get this baby out <laughs> Um, and so what happened was he had me push against, a, you know, seven centimeters basically to try and open up my cervix a little more and it ended up working, but I wasn't completely like, I guess effaced or whatever it is. It was still a little bit cervix trying to, to hold her in, um, which when you're trying to give birth, the fact that that cervix is stubborn is like, ugh, you know, but then other times, like I had a friend whose cervix, you know, didn't, um, stay closed and she ended up having to have it stitched closed. So, so it's like, you know, it's like. We, it's a blessing <laughs> that the cervix is as stubborn as it is, but you know, in this situation it was like, ah, get out of the way, let's get this baby out. So he, uh, he had me push and I was, he was able to get to the 10, but it wasn't like, there's was still a little cervix that was just like kind of in the way. So he's like, okay, um, <laughs> I'm bringing you to the OR and I can try, um, a vacuum delivery. And he's like, I'm going to give this two or three minutes. And if she doesn't come out right away, um, we're gonna do emergency cesarean. And and um, I was like, yeah, that's fine, whatever. <laughs> you know, I'm like, I'm just trusting because, I mean, I have no, um, <laughs> no, no other options. Um, but I just feel like he was the right doctor. And so what um, he ended up doing was, 
he, you know, had me do the, this is, and wheeled me to the OR, and I didn't even realize this, but I guess they had, like, shut Mark out of the OR, because he, um, uh, he was he didn't have on the sterile, like, when you're gonna do a cesarean or whatever, everyone has to be in these, like, sterile, um, like, outfits or whatever, so they ended up having him put one on, um, but had him wait outside, you know, just, and there were probably, like, 15 people in this OR, and when you're in the OR, you know, like, when you're in normal labor and delivery, it's like, you know, they dim the lights, they want it to be peaceful. We're in the OR, it is like <laughs> floodlights everywhere. You know, but I'm like, and usually I'm a very like private, like not naked in front of a lot of people <laughs> person, but then I was like, I didn't even, I didn't even like register that I was naked. I was just like, ah, let's get this baby out. So he was like, okay, we're gonna try this vacuum delivery. He tried it once, it didn't work. He's like, I'm gonna try it one more time, and then it's cesarean, you know? So I was like, okay, okay. So I think I heard him say something like, okay, there's no more cervix. So basically, I think right before, like, the last time, like, my last try on this, um, the cervix had fully effaced. And so I was able to, with a tremendous amount of pushing um, and the vacuum, uh, he was able to get her out. And... So when she was born, there, I mean, there was no conclusive understanding. He thought that maybe the cord was wrapped around her neck based on how she was acting. But when she was born, there was a, a big mark around her abdomen that looked like could could have been a cord. But it wasn't all the way around her body. It was just on her abdomen. So somehow it seems like maybe, of course, not a medical professional here, but just like based on what was happening in the monitoring, it seemed like what had happened was um, the cord was maybe wrapped around her abdomen and then as, like I'd have a contraction and you know the whole idea of a contraction is to like make room for her to go down like come on let's, you know like oh, birth is basically like going from being up here to transitioning on down to the birth canal and so I feel like what happened was as the contract, when the contraction ended and there was like space and she was supposed to be going down, she the, the umbilical cord was basically like holding her up and if she tried to get away you know and go down it actually compressed it and so it was limiting the oxygen supply and of course the cord is your life force you know your ability to breathe as an infant in utero she would kind of so what happened was that dip was that she was going down and then she i think she, you know like survival instinct she should kind of shimmied herself back up so that that cord was no longer progressed, and it's like, oh, perfect heartbeat. Um, so, it's just like, but she needed to come out. So anyway, that last bit was was scary because you know she basically was going down, trying to come, uh, trying to push her out, and that cord was compressed. And um, they actually measure the oxygen level in the cord and stuff, and that you know pH and all this stuff. It's just it's remarkable what they do testing wise. I don't know if it's just a New York thing. I don't ever remember them doing this in San Diego. Um, and her oxygen level was below where it should have been, um, it, like in the cord measurements. And you know there were some scary readings on that. But it and when that happens, um, and I've had this happen. I had that happen with Josiah. His heart rate went really low. They have it a, a pediatric crew in there because you know does this baby is this baby going to come out do they need resuscitation are they stillborn are is their heart beating are they you know can they breathe you know like there's a lot of things you know so um i guess in, in really intense circumstances they actually um you know if it looks like there's something there where it could be brain damage, brain damage from not enough oxygen they actually can cool the baby is really interesting and they I guess that keeps you know the brain damage from uh, it helps it heal which is very interesting I mean I've, it's just remarkable what you know they've learned um, in modern medicine but anyway so you know when she came out it was like is she gonna be okay you know I didn't know I was so scared um, after she came out they let Mark in and uh, yeah, uh, Maddie's here, baby. Hi. Aww. That's a good cry. Okay. Hi, Susan. 
Look at her shot, it's better than you yeah. the yeah. other babies. Yeah, yeah. 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 all the babies. Better than other babies, we have to pick up. All right. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to do this and we're bringing over to your mommy. Yeah, you're cute. Alright, just Olivia. Oh, <laughs> 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 We made it. I can't believe she's alive. That was terrifying. Thank God. Yeah. She's beautiful. I'm so grateful she's alive. I, I want to get her in your arms. That would be so Yeah. If that was a big trouble, huh? Was okay, that a big trouble? Tell her we, do you know if we're going back she to was her going, room? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, to her room. Yeah, yeah. What room was? You did, sweet girl. Yeah. You gotta pull it out. You yeah. did. <laughs> so sweet. Hi there. Good sucker right you're away. You're good. You're good at nursing. So grateful. Was it worth it? Yes. That's scary. Treasure. <clears throat> I'm so glad she's safe. Beautiful. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord, thank, thank you. Thank you for this little treasure. Yes. Late morning update. Um, Baby is healthy, Mama is healthy. So grateful. Amber, you you've done amazing. And here's here's baby and mama. Just hanging out, nursing. <laughs> Sweetest little thing. Oh. I got to hold her for quite a while. <laughs> she fell asleep. Let me with me. Eat. Yeah. How are you sweet. doing, sweetie? I'm just so grateful that she's alive and she's here and we made it through. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is your reward. Oh, I'm so grateful. Oh, Girl, can you see me? <laughs> can I help? Yeah, you can hold her. Is she like Noah? Yeah, she's kind of like Noah. She's gonna be the little Noah. She looks like a girl version of Noah. She's the dark skin. She's so sweet. <laughs> she's so precious. You are so perfect, you precious. She was fine. I mean, her Apgar was good. She cried. She, her re reflexes were good. Um, you know, and it's interesting. I mean, the doctor was, he just, you could tell he's had so much experience. And he said, you know, her heart rate was so good for so long during the delivery. I knew that, you know, she wouldn't get too sleepy. And I think by that, what he meant by that was that, you know, when you're lacking oxygen, you end up passing out, you know. Um, and so I feel like what he was saying was that he knew, he kind of knew that window, that, you know, like two to three minute window of like, okay, it can be a little lower during this time, but beyond that, it can't, you know. And it was only because she had had kind of a really just robust, like everything's fine delivery for most of it, you know. Look at this baby. Look at her, she's perfect. You can inquire at me. She's so little. She is so Are little. Are seven pounds normally nine. this little? Yeah, we forget how that tiny they become. It's seven pounds nine. Seven pounds nine ounces. She's a good weight. You're so cute. Aww. I'm gonna die, you're so precious. Yeah. this meeting Pearl. Very sweet. Love at Hello, first sight. Hello, my baby. Hello, my baby. How are you, precious? Did you have a good birth? Did you get born yesterday? Did you come That's into the world? Is your birthday on December 3rd? You the bestest Christmas present. Did you know it? You the bestest Christmas present. Oh. 
She's so sweet. She's so sweet. She's really sweet. Do you want to see her? Look, Mo. See how tiny she is? She's just a little baby. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you love her? No. Do you want to get her kissy? No. no. Yeah. Too, she, too she'll, tiny. Huh? Do you want to touch her? Be gentle She's to her? Sweet. Yeah. Touch the little. Can you believe gentle. it? You have a sister, Mo. Do you know Mama's sister. tummy? Do you know yeah. what I'm saying? He's <laughs> excited. So you love her? Here, touch her hand. Move touch her little hand. Gentle. Go feel her hand. Touch her hand. Mm -hmm. See? It's her she little, loves little hand. She loves you. She loves you. Yeah. She loves you. So, Amber, yeah. the, um, all the kids are in the lounge. The okay. lounge is half the size of this room. Oh, okay. And there's already four people in there. Okay, so we got um, <clears throat> But they all want to see you, okay, and Elijah so. is having a toot. Okay. So. <laughs> so we'll get over there. <laughs> so we have to wheel her over there. <laughs> so cute. It's raining out there, huh, yeah, guys? So we can't pick her up here. we got to be in the room. So. So, oh, scolded me for walking. How come she's takes turns on the couch? She's so tiny. <laughs> He's definitely gonna have dark hair. Yes. Yeah, for sure. Does she know what she's she's what she's she's doing? Doing? Come here. Come here, Mills. Come over here. Melody wants to see. Come, come see Daddy. Melody. Walk around the other way. Oh, Melody wants to see. She's not tall enough. Yeah, Daddy will help. Daddy will help you. It is raining out there, huh? Should let them move I think you have to do it in the family lounge. Is there a Melody, look at Meta. Melody, look. Fingernails. Um, seven pounds, nine ounces. Oh, that's a good size. Hey, Mommy. Mm hmm I forgot how small baby is. Oh, you are so tiny. She got evicted. Yes, she got evicted. Don't right now, because we have to, we have to show everyone. Okay. We'll Any chance she'll have blue eyes? I don't know. No, she, she will look like hair. Noah. I think she looks a lot like Noah. She's kind of like a girl, Picture Noah. Sorry. Isn't that sweet? Oh. Not of the baby? Well, and the baby. But I'm going to have to be able to hold the baby, though. She knows all of you because she's heard you all this time. Yeah, she's heard you guys talking. She knows who you guys are. She's heard us shouting and screaming, too. Remember me? Man, I really don't want to go, but I have a rehearsal. Mm -hmm. so so nice. Of here. No. She's so dark. Out there, huh? she's, she's, she's got, got that Mediterranean look. She's like daddy. Just as dark as me. Okay. Daddy. Oh. We've got this. Okay. A lot of different skin yeah. colors around here. Nice. I love you, Paul. Here, don't. She doesn't like being manhandled. She's okay. She likes being loved on. To a certain extent. She's your little sister. Hello. She's so small. Moses was giant. Well, he's nine pounds eight ounces. She's uh, uh, seven more. Kids are taking turns holding her. She's so small. She's so cute, Mo. Are you? Is she so sweet? You were wondering if she would like her, but I think she likes her. Yeah, so support her neck as you're trying to yeah, just like put yeah, your arms together. Yeah. And here, this arm underneath you. Support. Stop. Stop. I'm gonna cry. I'm gonna cry. Yeah, she's really delicate. 
Can you imagine how much hair she has? Yes, hair. She almost has hair. No. Yeah, we have a little soft with the top of her head because it's yeah. all it's all soft. Right? It might fall out. It might, oh, it might no. fall out. I don't know. Here. Seriously. Oh, God, this really good to us. If, if people have gone into the hospital on Friday, like we had planned, we wouldn't have the same staff. Oh, sorry. So cute. Oh, do you remember when you were a little bit? She got so much hair. Yeah. I didn't know I had hair. Really? Her hair is dark, so. So are her eyes. Her hair very dark, too. And this arm cups around her so that this gives a little space for her head. I think her neck is really deep. Can I get. Photo? Wait, do you have your phone? I have my phone. It's just table. on the table. Right? Hey, Yosh, do you want me to get a photo? With yeah, this vertical. Guys, get out. Oh, yeah. I'll do that. This one. Like that. And you're gonna wrap that arm around here. Here we go. Oh. Can you believe you're holding a little baby? Oh, look at that. 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 Oh, yeah. She's been waiting. Good job holding your melody. Are you going to be a good little mama? Keep that one down. Keep her. That's so good. You're doing such a good job, you know. Oh. You can even see those little fingers. <laughs> That's cute how she's licking the blanket. <laughs> oh, look. It's You're your holding sister. the baby. Look at her little hand. Can you believe it? Oh, my She's goodness, so Momo. You have a baby in your hand. Isn't that a big boy? Look at her. You have a baby in your hand. And guess what? You're her brother. You're her big kissy. brother. Her yeah. her she a needs a kissy. Oh. Oh. Does your hand taste yummy? Yeah. Do you love her? Yeah. She's eating her hand. Precious baby. We're all saying goodbye. Say so goodbye. See you see tomorrow. Yeah, you Hopefully we get to go home tomorrow. Mo, give a kissy. Yeah. Okay, I'll let you give her a kiss. I think she needs you. Here, give her a kiss. It's okay. She, she, everyone's all, just say everyone give her a, give her a lovies. Oh. <laughs> Got her friends. Thank you guys for coming. Probably somewhere in Italy or something. I love you, my sweetie. Say bye. Bye, guys. Love you. Thank you, will. Elijah, for trekking down here with everyone. Thank you. We'll see you tomorrow, hopefully. Bye. Love Thank you. you, guys. You really are a handful of God's grace. It's a good name that Mama picked for you. Yeah. <coughs> oh, bless you. Oh. Huh. Love you, my sweetheart. That was so cute. I miss the big kids and, and uh, little ones, and I need to go take care of them while Mom is here at the hospital. But leaving this is just, that's hard. There's a little sweet pea in there. And leaving my beautiful Amber, <laughs> that's going to be difficult. But, you know, this is the way it goes, and then tomorrow, um, if everything goes well, they get to come home and yes. I get to see them. So I'll be here, I'll be working a half day and getting over here to pick her up and take care of all those things tomorrow. So we'll see you soon. So Amber's been the trooper here hanging out with our little sweetheart, but this little girl sure knows how to eat and she just wants to be latched all the time. So we need it. <laughs> a little little Netta and she's nursing and this is what they gave us. They actually gave us two so Mark can have some too. He picked me up and I am so excited to go home so we're almost done. I was able to get discharged I'm so grateful for. So this is 
New York hospital food. It's actually really good. So it's like yeah, chicken marshala. Foodie hospital. It's like foodie hospital food and then some potatoes and then some sweet potatoes. It's kind of healthy. <laughs> Yeah, warm, warm for the outside. Oh, we're going home, girl. She is all snuggly in there. She so like you snuggly in there. Let me put you in the car seat. They told us we had to have a car seat, even though we're taking. Oops, sorry. <laughs> even though we're taking the subway home. Yeah. Very sweet. He's carrying lots of bags for me. Here's little Meta. Sweet one. You good? Out into the world. Yeah, it wasn't that cold outside, thankfully. <laughs> She's struggling early. My little sweetie. She's so tiny. That probably would have fit Moses when he was born. Yeah, it's just a newborn outfit. No, it probably would have fit Moses because he was big when he was little mm -hmm. or when he was newborn. Can I choose mommy? Um, yeah, you guys can take choice as long as she's not too fussy. She's too fussy, that means mommy needs to... No, yeah, she does first. seem like she has a little excess Billy Rubin. You know. A little bit, yeah, she's a little bit. Yeah. A little yellow. But they said it was okay, they said it was 7.7, .7, so... Okay. Okay. Give her a little kissy if you want. <laughs> You love Sissy? <laughs> no, he's holding that on. Daddy's something. She's awake a little bit. Yeah, she woke up. She's trying one of the little things I got at the hospital. It's like a little fruit salad. Do you like it, Melody? Yeah. <laughs> and I brought home this little bun from the meal they gave me, so I'm just trying it. <laughs> They're trying a little bit of hospital food. Hold him, sissy. She's so sweet. Yeah. Oh, she's waking up. Hi, baby. Wrapped up. Hi, baby. She's so sorry. I forgot how to use this thing. So mommy, she wakes up and then goes fussy. back to sleep so quickly. Yeah, which is funny. Yeah, I think she just seems happy, so that's good. What is this? Pearl's friend, um, Pearl came today to visit me because the hospital's right by Juilliard. And she brought, so her friend actually got this. I think she said her friend's name is Dove. So she got the Dove for now. Isn't that sweet? That's cute. That's really cute. This, this arm sure. holds down here, this arm holds up here. Okay. There you go. It's okay. Just... <laughs> yeah, you just want to make sure that her little. Oh, man, I made her sad. It's okay, she'll no, be fine. Right. My mom made a little banner for her. Welcome, baby girl. <laughs> so sweet. Can we say that she's kind of like Noah's twin, but a, a girl version? <laughs> 
Catherine just 13 years younger. Yes, yeah, the little girl version. She's sleeping. So Netta is upstairs with the big girls. They're burping her. I'm mm -hmm. hanging out with Mo. And what are we having, Mo? What is that? Is that fettuccine Alfredo? Well, I guess it's Capellini Alfredo because I don't actually have the right noodles, but <laughs> if the kids love this meal. So now Mom is eating. <laughs> and Mo's doing a little fit. But um, anyways, it's yummy. Make sure when you're at the hospital, even though they did a very good job on the food, you do appreciate home food a lot more. It's amazing. Mo, you're sure okay. I love you. Daddy's watching Pearl Pearl play at the yard. And Mo was very sleepy. He just needed his daddy and some sleep. Thank you for letting me have. Yeah, I got this from the hospital. I got these little things in a comb. They had it in the thing, so I knew the kids. This will make me want to brush my teeth. That's good. Anything that makes you want to brush your teeth is a good thing. Hey, mommy. You, you saw that comb and you knew I knew I knew you comb. wanted a comb, so I was like, oh, they gave me a comb. I know who to give this to. Mommy, I know. <laughs> Thank you so much. I knew You're you would because you knew you. I love that you gave me that. You knew to give me it. You knew to give it to me, so. Yep, I'm I sure really you'll enjoy that. Having a baby moment. They're deciding what movie they want to watch. I think they're maybe going to watch it, right? The Polar Express. Um, I think it used to be free, but now you have to buy it. It's okay. No, but we already... Josiah so also came home. He was at Frost's Tavern, having a good time with the Sons of the Revolution. Or, yeah, okay. Now he's eating, as usual. Anyway, <laughs> it was a miracle. I just feel it was a miracle. The reason why they wanted me to be induced and so forth was because, you know, I was 44. Um, but the real reason, I mean, the, obviously being 44, nothing is easier when you're in your 40s and in your 20s, right? Um, except for, honestly, I feel like part of the reason why she was able to be born the way she was and things worked out as well as they were was because my, you know, cervix was not like a first time cervix, you know, like he was able to, and I, they told me afterwards that if I was like a first time mom, that never would have worked, but because I'd had, you know, a bunch of kids. So in a way being 44 and being a mom of a lot of kids to helped, you know, their concern was good. Uh, it helped, I think, you know, kind of force her out early. Because I, I feel like the cord thing, that could have happened, you know, at 28 weeks or whatever. Like her twisting around in a way. But when you're you're tiny and there's all that fluid in there, it's like you're buoyant. It doesn't really matter. But as you get bigger and bigger, things get more and more compressed in there, including the cord. And so the fact that they were like, oh, you need to deliver, you know, because you're old. <laughs> but the, the, one of the doctors I saw at the clinic, she's like, you are not young. I was like, yes, I know. In, in mommy, mommy years, yes, I know. But um, anyway, so they're concerned about me being 44. I feel like maybe saved her life, not so much because of whatever was wrong with her, it was because I was 44. It was more that she was small enough, you know, at 39 weeks, they, they, gain, they gain weight, they get their heads gets bigger, everything rapidly at the end of a pregnancy. And because she was able to be you know, kind of forced out at the, basically the 39 week, um, 30, I think it was 39 week and three days by the time I was actually like giving birth because they were kind of forcing her out early, you know, that vacuum and this and that, it, who knows if she had another half pound or full pound of weight on her, if the cord compression would have been too much and she wouldn't have made it or, you know, it's just, um, I just, I just feel like I, I feel like God's hand was in that. You know, me getting kicked out after, well, they didn't kick me out. <laughs> they would have let me, like, sleep there, like, you know, for a day and a half. But, you know, me being, being there 11 hours on that Friday night, what if I had, you know, been there when, like, you know, five different people were delivering at a time? Just, I mean, like, when I went to that OR, there were, like, you know, <laughs> like, it's, like, two anesthesiologists, like, all the doctors, all the, you know, if there were three other people delivering, I probably wouldn't have gotten that, you know, royal treatment, you know? So anyway, 
I'm very grateful. I'm a, I am am a granola mom. I've looked longingly. I, think was, I don't know if it's, I think her name is Sarah Therese. You know, at these bathtub births. I'm like, oh, that's so nice. And with my um, birth history, I, I there's eight kids I could have had, like, in the bathtub. Like, nothing was wrong with them. They, I, Their heart rate stayed good the whole time. You know, I, 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 I didn't even need an epidural, you know. Um, but three of my kids uh, wouldn't have made it. Uh, Josiah wouldn't have made it. His heart rate went down to, to 50. And then after that, he needed some medical intervention. He was in the NICU for three days after that. He was pale, he wasn't breathing, he had pneumothorax. Um, Elijah was in the NICU for 10 days. He definitely would not have made it. He would have been a, a stillborn baby if it wasn't for medical intervention. And then <laughs> little Netta, which I just feel is like, yeah, I didn't want to like say her name because I was like, I don't know if it's her name, you know? I don't know, is it her name? But I mean, just, that that name also means grace, new beginnings, and you know, just all these things like, that's just, that's such a, a testimony to God's faithfulness, or it's her, her life. And then her middle name is Kathleen. So Kathleen is my husband's um, original mom's name. She died when he was five of brain cancer. And I actually, um, Kathleen means pure, and I didn't really choose it because of like what it means. But it was funny, Elijah was <laughs> holding her, he's like, you know, even though babies are like, you know, kind of dirty, you, you know, like, cause like, you know, they're, they're always like, you know, burping on themselves and all the stuff that little babies do. He's like, they just, they just smell so clean, you know? And so, you know, I think he might have even used the word pure, you know? And I was like, that's true, you know? So anyway, I, I felt like that was confirmation that was the right middle name. But anyway, so she, right now she's, she's doing well. I took her to the pediatrician today. She has jaundice. It's not like terrible. They did a, a blood draw. I don't know how doctors or that how this this lab tech was able to find one of her veins, but he found one. Of, she found one of her veins, and the, the serum was like 12 bilirubin when it should be 10 or less. You know, so she's a little bit elevated in that. So supplementing with some formula. I'm trying to just obviously get my milk supply up. Um, cause that's, I guess the cure for, for that. <laughs> so, um, and she just seems good. Like, like the, just having the, the kind of NICU staff in there, like for her birth and just having them be like, Oh, she's fine. You know, I'm like, you know, I just, I just, I, I was just, it blew my mind. You know, Mark was out in the hallway crying, you know, like when he wasn't able to be in there and just seeing how God worked all these things, you know, all the like forever waiting and, and you know, the annoyance of like, you know, like, oh, you're 44, you can't like, you know, you have to have a baby now, you know, I was like, well, can't I just like go into labor naturally and, you know, just that sort of thing, having it all work out for, you know, for good and for little Netta's good and just so grateful that people are looking after her and anyway, thank you for your prayers. Um, I really... I really needed them. <laughs> it just reminds me how fragile um, life is and how, yeah, it's just uh, not to be taken for granted. Anyway, thanks. We'll see you next time. <laughs>